have some pretty unfortunate news today. Why does the state have this law? Where the state comes here and says you're not allowed, you're to, not allowed to build it. You're, you're not allowed to do this. That basically you can't live in one of these removable structures. What's next for us? We're Matt and Cass, a couple of adventure chasers seeking the roads less traveled in today's world. For the last three years, we've been living on the road. First, in our bus home Lady May, then our rad van Jolene. Our journey brought us through the wildest parts of the United States, from the crystalline springs of Florida to the incredible peaks of Idaho, and then spending six months internationally traveling all through Mexico. But today, we put the van in park to take on a new challenge, the building of a fully off-grid homestead in rural Tennessee. So update from the Runaway Ranch, and we have some pretty unfortunate news today. So to catch you guys up, about a month ago we got here on the property, and we have some previous build experience. We built a bus, we built a van. So we got this cabin shell behind us to just have a structure to put on the property and build it out into our tiny home. Overall, like we plan to build a lot of structures from scratch here on this property. That's part of why we chose the county that we're in is that there's no building permits and codes for building from scratch. Absolutely. But the idea was with our previous conversion experience, if we got this shell, we could just really quickly get this thing going and have a place other than our little Astro <laughs> van uh, to live in as we kick off the rest of the projects here. So before purchasing this structure and before even buying this land, we did our research into where we were buying. We were looking at a lot of different states and the way that we came back to Tennessee, because we actually moved here about six years ago uh, to Chattanooga, Tennessee before living on the road for a few years. Part of the reason we came back is there are no state mandated building permits, uh, zoning laws, things like that. Whereas a lot of other states there are. And it's kind of up to a county basis on if they want to enforce what the state does provide. We confirmed um that the county that we are in is not one of those we called the county and before purchasing the structure we went on tennessee gov's website went on the building permit landing page scrolled around it and basically came to the same conclusion that unless you're in this one list of municipalities if you're not one of those then you're good then you're good county told us build website told us from scratch build a 3,000 square foot house out of toothpicks and hot glue if you want you're good to go so we definitely did our research before coming to this property and knew the Tennessee codes or thought we knew the Tennessee codes so we went ahead and had this cabin behind us custom built delivered here to our property posted an awesome video on YouTube about it really excited and that's when we got a comment from one of our subscribers so the comment was basically asking us how we're getting around the Tennessee law about these structures because they want to do the same thing, but they thought that they couldn't. And we were like, what? Yeah, initially <laughs> I was like, oh, they're probably in, realistically, most counties in Tennessee do either adopt the state's optional opt-in codes or they enforce their own codes. So yeah. I was like, oh, he's probably in one of these other places in which the county or the state can enforce kind of whatever they want. And I almost brushed it off at first and then just continued doing projects. But then I was like, all right, let me start digging a little Something bit more. Something in our head said like, look into that just a little bit more. That was an interesting comment. Yeah, and we found a YouTube video was the first thing that said that, that basically you can't live in one of these removable structures or shed homes. And I was like, huh? So I started digging, I went back to the permit website, again, found nothing, but then I did a search within the back end of the Tennessee Gov website and eventually found documentation on this. So this documentation is public guidance on ready removable structures. Which apparently, that's what a ready removable structure is. <laughs> now, although in this county, I could have built this structure right here myself done whatever I wanted, whatever process I wanted to build it, and everything would have been fine. But because it was delivered here, the Built state- Built off-site and delivered here. The state then overreaches the county's ability to opt out of codes and enforces their own code only for these structures. This is the only law that we know of that says this. Well, those in tiny homes. They also, have, they homes. also have an exception for tiny homes. Weird. <laughs> so I read into this documentation and basically it says exactly that, that in, in this case, the state's gonna overreach county authority and say that you can't do it unless you follow these steps. And following those steps is basically treating this like you lived in a county where all codes are enforced. 
um, and part of that is a building inspection of the 2018 building code. And we went to go read the 2018 building code to see if we could follow it, and the first thing that we saw was about lumber. So as we mentioned in a previous built, uh, video, this is an Amish built shed with on-site Amish saw milled lumber. So they don't have any stamp of authority that that fits the 2018's codes of what this lumber should be. So we have spent the last week and a half on the phone with the state of Tennessee. It's been turbulent. I mean, turbulent. when we so first we contacted our county again and they basically said, what the heck are you talking about? And we I had to, recognize I pulled up the law, showed it to her and she was like, oh, you know what? I might've heard something about this. Let me dig into it further. Called around and found out that, yeah, this does exist. Um, and the first number of people that we talked to by the state kind of didn't really care Even, about our situation because at the yeah. end, like, like you, you don't return this, you know? <laughs> we like, can't just like, give it back. <laughs> and this wasn't a readily accessible public document. Like if you live in one of these counties, you just think you don't have building codes. Why would you, I go past my county to know about building permits? Why would I go past the state gov's website <laughs> yeah. to know about building permits? And, and let, me ex let me excuse myself there. The state does put it on that. What you have to do is read through all of the immediate landing page that explicitly tells you that you can do whatever you want. Scroll all the way down to a drop down at the very bottom that says additional information for home builders, which we don't really fall into no. in this category. So why would I click it? But if I did click it at the very bottom of this page, it would then give me a drop down that at the very bottom of that, it would say public guidance for ready removables. If you're even lucky enough to know what the heck ready <laughs> removable means, you might click into it and then find this information, which is to be frank, a complete disservice to the citizens of Tennessee by the state of Tennessee, because we're now in a hole on this building. Absolutely. We contacted the guy that's in charge of all building codes and, and everything. And at first he gave us 18 different answers because he actually didn't even know what he was talking yeah. about. Then I called him later that day and I guess he reviewed all documentation and made himself familiar with it and then firmed up his answers. Because the first time I talked to him, he basically said, well, you might not have to, but you know, what it might be a good idea just in case you should yeah. go through these inspections but like you might not have to then when i called him very back wishy -washy. at the end of the day like we've already sunk this money into the structure we're gonna sink a lot more money building this yes. out and we don't want to do that and then get to a point where the state comes here and says you're not allowed you're to, not allowed to build it. you're you're not allowed to do <laughs> this and directed us to the guy that's in charge of manufactured housing he was the first tennessee state employee other than our county, because our county is wonderful. Like but he, he was <laughs> the first Tennessee state employee to actually treat us like humans when we talked to him. That like, he realized that we were in the hole because we didn't know, we weren't readily available to this information. Yeah, the information wasn't readily available The information us. wasn't readily available the to us. The ready removable <laughs> information wasn't readily available to ready us. Ready available. <laughs> he said, this is not right. That information needs to be surfaced way more in front of everybody. You guys are right. I feel for you guys. I'm going to push for you guys. He talked to a lawyer. They told him no. Oh, so he said, okay, you know what? Let, let me try one more time. I'm going to sit down with the lawyers. This is over a week and a half now. So we have gone through a week and a half of just like, what are we doing with this structure? Yep. The day that he was supposed to call us back with information, he told us that we would receive a phone call from the lawyer. And the lawyer that we spoke with was an absolute unsympathetic robot. Um, that basically just told us there's nothing you can do and had no real answers. None. Like, could not give us any answers on anything. Because we came up with a couple potential loopholes that we're going to tell you about in just a little <laughs> bit here that you could potentially use to work around this law. Um, but we'll save that yeah. for closer at the end of the video. Um, but that just put us in a really bad situation. So quick break from our personal situation to answer the question of why does the state have this law? Well, that's a pretty darn good question. The state's gonna tell you that it's for public safety, which obviously doesn't make sense in our county because again, we could have built this structure and built it a lot worse than this structure is and everything would be okay. Also, like, ironically, like Tennessee's a state with no vehicle inspection. For example, we bought our truck, drove it totally legally in the state of Tennessee back to our property, and upon getting to our property, the brakes blew up and totally went out because of neglect of vehicle safety on that vehicle. But it was legal in the state of Tennessee. Now, if that blowout happened on the highway, 
we could have killed ourselves and others. So, I mean, public safety, like, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't have vehicle safety laws. I'm just saying, like, public safety sounds like a pretty poor excuse when I could have built this structure on my property. So does the state have this law simply to overreach the part of state law that allows counties to opt out of state regulation? Maybe. Is it ironic that Clayton Homes, one of the largest manufactured homes or affordable housing uh, manufacturers in the country is headquartered here in Tennessee and buying homes like this kind of makes them lose business? I don't know, maybe that's just ironic. Does it have anything to do with people making movements to live off-grid, to tiny live, to live alternatively? I don't know, that's what it feels like. But why the state actually has this law? Again, they're gonna tell you it's for public safety. In any county that actually enforces building codes, if you were to build it yourself, I'll buy into that. That's okay. Because any other structure you're gonna have to have inspected. But in any county that is allowed to opt out by Tennessee state law, it doesn't make sense to me. There, there's, there's no good reason for this law. So enough of this law, what's next for us? The answer is we don't fully know. We're pretty um, bummed. Yeah, <laughs> we love I, it. And it's not just loving, this puts us in a really poor situation. Um, contrary to popular belief, we are nowhere near rich. Nowhere near rich. <laughs> um, we had savings that we worked really, really hard to build up that we and purchased we this property purchased with it. and purchased this with so that we could continue to make money and as we made money, build out other structures on our property. An option that we have after talking to the lawyer is that technically speaking, we could deconstruct this and rebuild it. Because if we deconstruct it, it's no, it. it's no longer a ready removable structure, it's now wood. Yeah. And then we could rebuild the same exact structure here. And obviously we're very handy and we're very DIY people, but it's a big task to deconstruct this all. And then reconstruct it. it and by ourselves. the amount of time that it's gonna put us back while we're living in, a, in the van. We're not saying we won't do that. We're <laughs> just saying we haven't decided if we yeah. would do that. It's just really hard for the two of us to take on right now. Any construction company wants to come out and help us do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing with it, with this law is like, what's the definition of deconstruct it? Because it doesn't say that you're allowed to do this. It's just, there's no way of stopping you from yeah, doing it. Yeah, it's just one. So we asked the lawyer, we were like, well, where do we have, like, when does this structure become no longer a structure and it's no longer ready removable? And she said, she can't give us any legal guidance on that. And the state has zero definition of it. So just put like, us in a very gray area. People will say, well, just take the door off and put it back on. And now you built it yourself. And like, I hear you. I hear you. Trust me. And other people will say, just screw the state. Like you're watching this video, you know? <laughs> and the unfortunate part of our life being so transparent is that we have to kind of follow things. Yeah, so if you bit. like the transparency, hang around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're we try. We're figuring it out. We're at least gonna make it comfortable. A little workshop, a workshop with a couch and a TV area. because that is perfectly legal. Yeah, um, and we'll live in our van, um, which is very comfortable still, so it's fine. Yeah, and and we'll we'll figure it out. It's just right now. It's a really pretty shed. Yeah, <laughs> and we love it. So at the end of the day, this is all just wildly frustrating because a state of Tennessee that no matter what your feelings are about it, it prides itself on personal freedoms, and this law does the exact opposite. Especially and, to the county that we're living in. So. And, and it's hidden in a place that just misguides the public and just doesn't. So we've had them. a couple of rough weeks, guys, just dealing with this, and we were really on a high, really excited. Yeah, comment below what you guys think we should do if you have any advice um we really are interested to hear it um i we're just kind of at a loss and right now we're just getting back to homesteading we planted yep. a garden we're trying to live slow we're, we're trying to take do, our time build this property and do what we need to do to we're just reminding it. ourselves why we're here why we're here because um, then let us definitely get upset pretty long for too long <laughs> but in the meantime thank you guys so much um for being here and supporting us uh, it really means a lot to us. I'm sure that we're gonna get a lot of loving comments from this. Yeah. So just before y'all go and do that, I'm already gonna say thank you so yes, much for that. Yes, we love that. you guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And next week, I 
promise, I hope to promise, that we'll be bringing you some sort of exciting project that we're working on. Definitely. Something fun. There's and always some, something exciting here at the ranch. Yeah. We'll bring you some good energy that's a little more on brand for us. So. <laughs> I know. We're normally not this like, but yeah, here we so. are. Cheers, friends. We love you. Cheers. <laughs>